week and excited about that and also our one daughter's birthday is this week so we're going to take four days and do some birthday celebrations and other things and so but both those um, events will be happening I hope you support them um, this will be Scott's first time that he's ever done this on his own and um, be curious to see how it works out uh, John Randall is going to help him run the um, the media so that he can do that so if you can somehow jump on and give him a little support I'll be online I just won't be here so hope that you do that you know I just wanted to give a, a, a minute I wanted to give you a little bit of a praise report you know we we give out um, we, we send out our sermons a couple different ways we send them out according to Facebook and YouTube and then we also have been doing since the very beginning uh, almost the very beginning um, these podcasts I don't even know if you know anything about them but basically what they are is is that you can actually listen on your phone or any kind of device and you can just listen to the sermon and so we've been doing that for I don't know probably four years somewhere around a little over four years and uh, last week we hit 20,000 downloads so unique somebody um, said hey I want to listen to this and they downloaded that podcast we hit 20,000 last week which I never thought that that would happen um, it's even greater than that so uh, Scott and I um, paid five dollars to the the people that distribute our podcast and we got some more stats and the one thing that we found out was, and I, I don't know if this will blow you away, not including the United States, in those four years we have had 22 countries download our podcast, our sermons. 22 different countries. And, and, and just like for some of them, like India and Ireland and Russia, um, there's multiple downloads. I think the highest is 73 downloads, and that was in Ireland. Now, I did find out in the last couple of years that I'm German-Irish, so maybe it's just some of my relatives that I don't know. But I say that for this reason, is that, you know, often when we are, um, you know, messing around with this electronic stuff, there's times that you almost get like, well, why are you doing this? You know, why are you doing it? Now, th this doesn't include, you know, how many people have downloaded off of YouTube or how many people have downloaded but just the podcast, there were 20,000 reasons to do it. And it's not convenient, it's not easy. The people that have had to sort of sub in for Scott have found it's not always that easy to do. But, but when God takes your humble offering, it's amazing how he can bless that and turn it into something that you could never imagine. And, and what I want to encourage this church in is that God is blessing us this year. It, you know, the board had a meeting the other week. So, so we had this great blessing of understanding where the podcast was and how it had been pushed out to so many different countries. And then the board had a meeting in the last week or two, and we, what we were talking about was, you know, how are we doing tithe and we're, you know, we're doing just about where we need to be maybe slightly lower but you know we had snow weeks and you know we were talking about the future and how there was this set number that you know this number that we need to start praying about and the number's not small I mean it's like fifteen hundred dollars and we were just saying you know this is a number that if we if if we would start praying that it would um, help our finances if we were, would start to get $1,500 a month. And I go, okay, well, let's just start praying about it. And so the board committed to praying about it. Now, I may start sweating through my eyes a little bit. So you guys know that every once in a while I'll say how you can tithe one way is through Facebook. All right, I say that every once in a while, and some of you have done that yourself. Uh, we received the check this week 
for $1,575 through Facebook. And we were praying for $1,500. And it was almost like God and, and Jeanette and I were like slack-jawed a little bit. I don't know why God is so faithful. But it was almost like he was saying, well, here's your $1,500 plus here's 75 more. Like, if you'll trust me enough, if you'll rely upon me enough, if you will do that, watch me bless you. Be still and know I am God. Watch me work. And I will tell you, this church is a faithful church. And I will tell you that you serve a faithful God. And when I saw that check, I made a copy of it, and I said, I'm going to put that up where I can see it and remind myself that if I am willing to go to the Lord and if I'm willing to trust in Him, if I'm willing to do that, He will bless this church. He will bless you. This church is vibrating. I don't understand it all. I don't even understand why it's happening in some ways. But something is happening. 22 countries, 20,000 downloads, $1,575. Do we not serve a faithful, amazing, wonderful God? Amen. Amen. I did that without sweating through my eyes. But I will tell you, when, it, when it, it was such an encouragement this week that I hope that you could be, just feel, I, I wanted to talk about it only because of this, I hope that you can feel a little bit of the excitement of what it means to be in the presence of the Lord. And, and right now we're going to stand up and we're going to try to sing and we're going to do our very best because we are excited to worship this great and awesome God. Let us stand and sing together.
child of God. Yes, I am. You may be seated. We come to the time of our service where we recognize the power of prayer and I've I've given you examples of that today you know whether it's praying for God's provision um, Mark Batterson writes and I, I think it's a catchy phrase if God provides you the vision he will provide the provision but only if we are willing to give it to him you know, there are things in our lives right now that are difficult. There are things that are going in our lives that are not only physically an issue, but mentally an issue and spiritually an issue. Each of us internally are likely saying, Lord, I need this to be resolved. Um, as Debbie sings often, she sings the song, Waymaker. He's the solution maker. He's the way maker. He can change a situation. He can change me. He can change you. When we come to prayer, we come to a God that nothing is too big for Him. There are people online right now, if you... Um, Put in the comment field any um, prayer requests that you may have. We will um, obviously pray over them, and we'll pray over them through the week. Uh, for those here, uh, there's a card in front of you, typically in the pew, if we've got them all filled up. If you'll write those down and put them in the offering plate after the service, then that also is a, a way you could give us prayer. Uh, here in the sanctuary, if you'll just raise your hand, do you have any prayer requests? Yeah, you know, almost everybody raises their hand, and it's because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of need right now. There's a lot of need for God. But do, not, do we not serve a big God? When I pray to him, I think about, you know, what kind of God size am I praying to? You know, if you pray to a small God, then you are trying to limit God. I pray to a God that I can't even imagine how big he is because there are no limitations to what he can do if we're willing to give it to him. The question is, can you rely upon him 
for that. Whatever that is. Whatever issue that is. Can you rely upon him for that? And that's what we worship him. That's why we pray to him. That's why we set aside a time, not only today, but on Wednesday nights. It's because we believe a church fueled by prayer is a church that can march out into this world and do great things through God's provision. Why don't we pray? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this moment. Lord, we know there are those hands that were raised, those comments put into Facebook, the, the perhaps the things written on the small cards, that there are real things that you can address. And there are many that, that are difficult to even talk about, that, that are being internalized right now, Lord. And I ask that in those circumstances, may you come near those in need. May you wrap your loving arms around them. May they know that you are a real God, a God of infinite possibilities, a solution maker. And may they know right now and have the comfort right now that you are there. Lord, we just want to thank you for all that you have done. The amazing things just this week that we have been, our eyes have been opened to. But all of us could lift our hands and praise, knowing all that you have done for us. And yet, we anticipate what you are about to do. And we just want to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And they all said, amen. Why don't we stand and worship again?
Please remain standing for the scripture reading. Good morning. Um, today's Bible reading is taken from Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22 to 23. And it says, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning before there was ever an earth. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Don. You can be seated. I love when our uh, youth and our um, young people are willing to come up and read, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm, I'm thankful that we have a couple um, young uns here today that are related to me. And uh, they're getting too big too quickly, but I'm thankful for my granddaughters that are here today. I got one upstairs and one downstairs. Um, today, um, we are. We've been exploring this Bible study where we um, take this chronological read through the Bible. And many of you have joined us in that. Uh, some of you may be ahead and some of you may be behind. But I hope that you continue to strive forward. I know right now for many of us we're reading in the Leviticus area um, where we see the commandments, we see the laws, we, we somewhat... Um, perhaps struggle with the reading that goes with that it's not always easy to hear well if you you know if you got if you did this and you have to have two doves and we have to do a drink offering and all the prescription that goes around the old covenant and repentance to sin and I wonder if you're like me at times and you're like almost overwhelmed by it and and what I always struggle um, thinking through is is how did anybody ever remember this? You know, we struggle sometimes when the time changes, knowing what time to come to church. In fact, it's easier today because most of us have cell phones that automatically change. But if back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, you, you basically had to put out like a broadcast to the whole world. The church is not going to be here. How many of us have ever, I mean, I have. Have you ever come too early or too late to church because... You messed up on the time. These people are having to remember all these laws, way over 600 of them, all the commandments, and what to do about them. And at times, I think that perhaps is overwhelming. And I, I think what it does for me, it, it, it always is this question, how could anyone live such a perfect life? You know, if you had to know all those things, you know, you almost would have to be a scholar to le even come close to understanding the perfection. And, and, and Apostle Paul was a scholar. He says, I was the Pharisee of Pharisees. He was an expert on the law. He knew it better than we would ever know it. He knew it better than almost anybody ever knew it. And yet, I think these two propositions exasperated him as well first the law showed that god has a perfect righteousness that what is right to god is perfect what is right to god will blow your mind away of how he thinks of things and the law reveals that secondly it helps the law helps us recognize that we cannot have the righteousness of God without God. Try to live the laws, just try to live the Ten Commandments, let alone all the other laws. Just try to live the Ten Commandments every day of your life. 
How many of us fail? Especially when Jesus puts caveats to them. But don't murder. I don't think we have any murderers in here, right? But if you hate in your mind, are we not in some ways murdering them? I'm sure we have no liars in here, except for that one time when we lied. I'm sure we have no coveters in here or lusters or or adulterers or all these different things. And and what, what God was, I believe, doing in the Old Covenant and what Paul suggests is, is that, you know, he's, he's making us recognize this statement from Romans 3.12, and this is Paul writing about this dilemma. It says in Romans 3.12, they have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. When we recognize what the law was really saying is, is that by ourselves, none of us can do righteousness, what is right to God, on a consistent basis. We can make choices that are righteous, but it is so difficult for us to be consistent in that. To not allow self to get involved in the equation. And if that was the end of the conversation, if that was the end of Paul's epistles, well, none of you are good enough. Not one of you. You're horrible creations. But Paul goes on in 4.13 and says, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. I can be righteous. I think when we think of all things, I think often we think of, oh, well, he's talking about like I can run a marathon if if God strengthens me. No, it's very basic. We can be righteous. We can do all the righteous things that God expects of us through Christ. And this leads to the title of my sermon for today. The title of my sermon today is Because. Because. And not the because like you may get from um, a young person. Why did you do that? Because. Not from an adult who when a child asks, why do I have to do that? Because. No, this because is like the hymn that we sing. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. That's the because we're talking about. And I want you to think about this because in this way. You know, as you start to think about um, the word because, I want you to ask yourself as we go through this, what is my because? Why am I a Christian? Why do I come to church? Why would I believe that God is righteous? What is my because that would um, put me in a situation, put me in an attitude that would say, I am going to rely upon God because? What is your because? We're going to be in Leviticus chapter 19 today. I think this will be the first time I've ever preached out of Leviticus 19. And I'm sort of excited um, that this sort of lines up with some of the reading for the last week. Leviticus 19, verse 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, 
Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Now let's make sure we understand part of the definition of holy is righteousness. And so we could read this, You shall be righteous, for I, the Lord your God, are righteous. You know, I think often when we talk to uh, non-Christians or we're, we're trying to talk to uh, somebody that's struggling with some kind of appetite of destruction, some kind of shame, fear, or guilt, that often we just say to them, you need to start acting better. You need to start acting good. Don't you know what God wants you to do? And I think that's an error. I, th- I think we miss that God has said himself, let God, this is what we should be saying to him, let God do a great work in you so that you can walk righteously with him. See, there is not this expectation that you have to become this super saint, but what you have to become is a person that is willing to continue to pursue God and to put Jesus in the center of everything that you do. And when you do, it becomes your because. For example, if we go back and read the scripture, it says, you shall be holy. And if we insert this word because, you shall be holy because I am your Lord your God. Why are we willing to serve God unless our because is is that we recognize Him as our Lord and Savior? And when we declare God, see, here's the thing that I think a lot of people miss in their Christianity. I'm not saying I don't at times. When we start to declare how big our God is, but treat him like he is small, we miss our because of why we do what we do. Why do we sing on Sundays? Is it so that we can get your vocal cords loosened up? Is it so that somehow it primes me for like producing a sermon or perhaps maybe for some reason... We sing just to get the blood flowing in you, make you stand up and down so you don't fall asleep in my sermon. No, the because is, it's because we serve the one and only God and we are here to worship Him. Worship means to deem worthy. We are saying, Lord, we believe that you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of of us and you are our because if somebody asks you why are you a christian what is your because because of what god has done is a because verse three every one of you shall revere his mother and his father and keep my sabbaths i am the lord your god verse four do not turn to idols nor make yourselves molded gods I am the Lord your God three of the ten commandments have just been pronounced in these two verses but why would these commandments be important to you because he is your Lord thy God I think sometimes we miss that I think sometimes we miss that that this implied because uh, is the reason that we strive to be closer to God. There are those that believe that religion is about rule making, about rule following. And I would suggest to you that your because is not to follow the rules. 
Your because is to follow God. Your because is to follow God because what He has done in your life. And I will tell you, there are many worldly people that look at us Christians and say, you guys are silly people. And go watch on YouTube. I love watching the, the, uh, the other side, or like I like to say, the enemy working. And watch them talk about how silly it is. Uh, there was a guy this week on YouTube that I was watching, and he was talking about how silly it was that, that somebody would not have sex before they were married. That, that this was a ridiculous concept that only Christians thought about and that it was a silly rule that nobody ever believed in. Why wouldn't you satisfy yourself? Why would you not um, take that carnal urge and feed it? Because. Our God is righteous, and he asked us to be holy and righteous in him. Now, don't make that into a religious thing. I'm not saying we've got to walk around like, you know, pious and I'm better than everybody else. I think when we hear righteous, we hear that a lot. But could we just walk around like what, what matters to God matters to us? Could you just walk around and say, what matters to God matters to me? See, when God gives these three commandments, they're really not all like religious type things. Honor thy father and thy mother. It matters to God. It should matter to you. You know, take the time to recognize the Sabbath. We're not Sabbath keepers like the Israelites were. But God said through Jesus that the Sabbath was made for us because we needed it. How many of you are walking around today exhausted? Because you're working seven days a week. Now some of you say, well, I only work five. But many of you work at home as much as you work at work. And you work seven days a week and you don't take a break and you don't take a Sabbath. And we wonder why we're tired when God on the seventh day rested. If God, this big God that we have, this infinite God, if he rested, why would we not rest? And this world today is saying, look, I got all these things, all these screens, all these ideas that you need to look at 24-7. And I don't criticize those. I think there's value in the information but you get in the tornado of social media every second of every day and you will be exhausted. And you may lose your because. I hope that when you come to church on Sunday, it's not because it's a routine. Now, the one value of COVID there was a lot of negatives. The one value, value of COVID is that it broke your routines. Whatever your routine was, it was broken. You know, you're not doing the same things you did a year ago. And, and what value that has in the church is, I hope this has become less of a routine and more because he lived. I hope that we come here together and we start to worship because of what he has done. Verse 5. And if you offer a sacrifice of peace, offering to the Lord, you shall offer it of your own free will. God loved you so much, he's not going to force you to be good. I think he probably went and interviewed a bunch of parents and realized that when you force your children to be good, it usually don't work anyway. So God said, well, we're not going to force you to be good. I'm going to give you free will. 
I'm going to love you enough to let you make a choice. You can choose to love me, or you can choose not to love me. I'm going to give you that option. I can either be your because, or something else can be your because. For some of us, that because was to satisfy our appetites. And I don't know if Guns N' Roses will ask for a royalty. I use it all the time. That is their album cover from 1987. They were all on heroin, every one of them. And all they sung about was, was heroin. Mr. Brownstone and other songs were all about heroin. About, and the title of that album was The Appetite of Destruction. I will tell you, the title of some of our lives for a period of time was The Appetite of Destruction. And our because became the appetite instead of our because becoming God. And when it says here in verse 5 that you have free will, what it's saying is if you are aligned with God, in other words, if your will is aligned with God's will, that you will find a repentive peace and hope. See, what you're sacrificing in the Old Covenant is not what you're sacrificing in your New Covenant. In the Old Covenant, you sacrificed, you know, birds and lambs and cows, and we would have to be a slaughterhouse here, and it would be crazy. But what you're sacrificing in the New Covenant is yourself. What you're saying is, my selfishness is not my because. My desire to fulfill my needs is not my because. It is God's because, and I'm willing to sacrifice that because of what he did, because he lives. Verse 9, When you reap the harvest of your land, you should not wholly reap the corners of your field, nor shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. And you shall not gl uh, glean your vineyard nor shall you gather every grape of your vineyard, and you shall leave them for the poor and the strange. I am the Lord your God. You may say, well, pastor, that's an interesting scripture. Why would you put that into this sermon? Again, what is your because? Can you be generous because we trust that God is enough. We trust that God is enough, and if God is enough, then whatever we have in excess, are we willing to share that with others? There are people in this church right now, there are people in this church right now that are willing to give in secret so that others will not struggle as much. There are people in church today that say, I'm not going to glean the corners of the field. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, remember, this is part of the story of Ruth, right? And I know the, the ladies' Bible study, their heads are shaking, you know, yeah, Ruth, this sounds just like Ruth, right? Because that's what was going on. And for those that were widows and those that could not help themselves, God had created a system that because he was Lord God because we trusted in Him, because we had enough that we could share with others. The government should not have to subsidize the poor because we as a church should be there for them. That's what this is saying. I really think that perhaps the day that we as a country decided that the government needed to take care of the poor was the day that we sort of stepped back as a church. I, I see people not stepping back, and I think the answer to that today is, is because who God is. Because God is enough. But I think it's interesting that, that God put in his system of what was righteous is don't use everything you got to satisfy yourself. Make sure that you have some that you allow others to benefit from. 
Verse 11, shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another, and you shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord, and you shall not cheat your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you all night until morning. Again, what is your because? Obviously, there's a link to love thy neighbor, treat others as you would like to be treated. Why do we love our neighbor? Let me give you a couple options. Because it's easy? Because it's always our advantage to love our neighbor? Or is it because we love God? And because we love God, we will love our neighbor. I don't think that it's always easy to love our neighbor. It may not even be as easy to love those that are next to you right now. Don't look at them. But the reality of it is, loving thy neighbor is never easy. It's very seldom easy advantageous but it is something that God has said love them like I had loved you again what matters to God must as a Christian matter to you I think we have a ton of kids downstairs right now I mean either 10,000 or 12 somewhere in there You choose which number is probably closer. But, you know, God through Jesus said, these children matter to me. They matter to me. Because we love him, we love them. They're not always easy. Our youth group has been growing, but in that there are growing pains. There are questions that have to be answered in in technique and how we do things. Our because, though, is that we love them no matter how messy it is, how difficult it is. Come here for BBS for one week. And let's hope, let's believe that we can have BBS again. But come here on VBS week and see how messy it is. I'm not just talking about having to clean up afterwards. You got kids running every direction. They're squirting out the sides. They're going over the top. They're they're making loud noises. They're making weird noise. Some of them are cussing. Some of them are saying inappropriate things. Some of them have never been in a church before. Why would we ever do that? Because. God loves them, we love them. This is also the reason that last summer when I preached, this church must be a hospital and not a museum. It must be a hospital and not a museum. It's because we love God that we can love our neighbor, no matter what they're going through no matter what struggles are happening, no matter whatever that is, that would prevent you from loving them. It doesn't mean that you have to endorse everything they do, but it does mean that because God loved you, loves you, done everything for you, died for you, rose again for you, stands up in heaven advocating for you that you must also do the same for those around you. Because he lives. Verse 14, you shall not curse the deaf nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear your God. I am Lord. You shall respect God. What is your because? It is that I respect 
God. Not that I'm scared of him, it's that I respect him. And he talks about here of helping the disadvantaged, of helping the physically disadvantaged. But I would suggest to you that even today, not only are we supposed to help the physically disadvantaged, but also the spiritually disadvantaged. In Romans 14, 13, Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or a sister. Again, what is your because? Because I love God, I will help those in spiritual need, not just physical need. It seems easier for us to say, well, they have a physical need. It's much more difficult for us to say, I, they have a spiritual need and it's not easy to deal with them. It's not easy because they don't always want it. But can we still love? Can we still love? Can when they treat us poorly, horribly, can we live in the because I love God, I'm still going to love God you a church that has that attitude becomes a place of healing becomes a place where people can come and find their because a church that starts to love recklessly like God has loved us recklessly, becomes a church that begins to help those around them. Verse 15, You shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. In righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go about as a talebearer among your people, and you, nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. Again, what is your because? I think often churches can struggle with, well, we don't know that person. So we're going to treat them differently. I tell this story not because I... I persecute the church that it happened at, but I tell this story for instructional purposes. Jeanette and I were starting to become very interested in coming back to church. We had been away for a while, and we didn't have a church that we would call our, our home. And I didn't feel like going that week, but Jeanette said, okay, I'm going to go. She takes her daughter to this church. In, this is in Ohio. And they walk up to the door, and they saw that they were strangers, and they were told to leave. They were not part of the membership. That may seem harsh to you, but I will tell you, in varying degrees, the church in the United States does that every Sunday. It may be because of your race. It may be because of how you're dressed. It may be because of who you are. But if you read this verse, what it's saying is, don't make any difference between anybody. Allow God to sort them out. Allow God to judge them. There was a sister that used to come to this church that said this all the time, we'll catch them and you clean them, pastor. No. We catch them and God cleans them. It is Him. It is His righteousness. It is not my righteousness. Don't follow me. Follow Him. Because if you follow me, I'll probably take you over a cliff. Except for the fact that he is my because. And I am trying at my best every day to follow him. 
And if you're following me, I hope that means that you're following him, that he is in your sight, that he is your choice. It is your love for him that motivates you. What matters to him is what is most important. And I will tell you, every day of my life, I may not always do it perfectly, but my because is it matters to God. It matters to me. Finally, it says in 17, you shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Because you are my Lord, I will not hate But there's a deeper meaning in this scripture. And part of it is is that there is not this underlying unforgiveness. This secret unforgiveness. Do you you ever have that in your life? I'm trying not to look at anybody specifically. I'm not pointing at anybody. Nor are you online. But I do believe that often we struggle with secret unforgiveness oh yeah that don't bother me down deep in size we're seething in unforgiveness see what it says is is and, and it's a weird statement you shall surely rebuke your neighbor that sounds anti love thy neighbor right that sounds like that but what it's really saying is don't let things fester bring them out Come to God together and allow God to work through you because God will be the forgiveness. He will solidify the forgiveness in you. Your because of forgiving is because He forgave you. And if He could forgive you, if He could forgive you, if He could forgive me, Surely we can forgive others. We don't have to foster and fester in ourselves saying, Oh, I I just can't get over this. My God's big enough you can. And there have been great atrocities in life committed to you, committed on you. But God is bigger than that. God is the because of of you being able to have forgiveness. Because forgiveness will rot you to the core. Unforgiveness will destroy you. And God knows that. Put it on Him. Let Him become the because of how you can begin to resolve those issues. It doesn't mean that you, like, uh, it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. That's why it's rebuke. It's not forget everything. It's let's get it out in the open where we can deal with it. Let's not make it some secret that is going to destroy us. If you believe in that, it is because of God's love that it can happen. So what is your because? What what drives you? What motivates you? What makes you who you are? What is your because? You know, we're getting closer and closer to Easter. Is your because that he was willing to walk toward the cross? Is your because because he was willing to climb up onto the cross? Or is your because because he was willing to rise from the dead and to give to you the possibility 
of eternal life. When, as Christians, we recognize our because, I believe we can do greater things together. And if you're wrestling with that, why am I a Christian? Then I will tell you, is to step back and ask yourself, what has God done for me? What matters to him? And allow that to form your because. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now. Um, many of us right now know that our because is because you live, because you love, because of what you have done in our lives, because we can rely upon you, because we can trust in you. But there are some, whether on Facebook or perhaps on the podcast or perhaps on YouTube or even in this sanctuary right now, that we're unsure of our because. And Lord, I ask that you um, come near them and that you, that you speak to them and may they feel your presence and may in some way as a church, may our words and our actions and our hands and feet begin to share that because with others. Be near them right now, Lord. Comfort them. Strengthen them. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this is it. We're going out. First call. Time to be a hero. Brennan, come on. Let's go. Get this. Get this. The heroes. Rook. Yeah. Hold on there, Rook. We're not going out on this one. Why? Why not? We're not ready. No, we're not. You just go back to bed. I'll let you know. All right? Go on. Hey, 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 rookie. Get back to work. We're training. No, no, no. The, the alarm. We're just training. Go. Go. We're training. Do it. Go. No, 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 no. Not until this place is spotless. Let's go. Come on. Hey, rookie. No, no, no. Keep working out. We're not strong enough yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not yet. It's not a good time. Not a good time. Hey, come on, the fajitas will burn. Calm down. Hey. Hey. Oh, I just got comfortable. Somebody shut that thing off! It's the best part. Nope. No, no, no. Nope, nope. No, no, it's not safe. I'm not feeling it. Not safe? Seriously? We're firefighters. Slow down there, overachiever. We don't even know if people out there like firefighters. I'm not feeling called. I'm not feeling it. People are dying out there. No, people die every day, rookie. Don't you think something's wrong here? I mean, isn't it strange that we're a fire station? We don't even put out fires? Nope. I get this one. There's other stations. Come on, it's right next door. Hey, if they want our help, they come and ask us. Well, we go over there acting like we're the big shots. We got all the answers. But, <laughs> hey, they may not even want our help. Help me! Hey, they could be talking to anyone. You firefighters, help me! I gotta catch this call here. 